White balance can be a notoriously tricky subject for beginner photographers. So let's talk about what it is, how it works, and how we can use it for accurate color reproduction in our photos. When you capture a photo and you find that it looks too blue, too cold looking, or too orange, too warm looking, then the reason for this is because you're on the wrong white balance. So what is white balance? Well, your camera is trying to find the white in a scene, and sometimes it gets this wrong. We'll talk about why that is in a moment. It's basically trying to emulate the human eye, only our human eyes are almost flawless at this, whereas a camera doesn't do a great job. It's still just technology, and it's not quite there yet. It can do a reasonable job, but it'll still get it wrong. So the reason for that is because different light gives off a different temperature. It uses a temperature system called Kelvin. So an example, if I'm shooting in a tungsten light, a regular indoor light bulb, that's a light temperature of around 3200. Whereas where we are outside, currently in the shade, on a cloudy day, we're looking at about six to 7,000 Kelvins. What you need to do is you need to match up your white balance to the shooting conditions you're in. If you get this wrong, you'll get the wrong color cast and it will look too blue or too orange. So that's the way it works. It's very important that you set the right white balance. Now, as an aside, if you're shooting in RAW, which I thoroughly recommend you do, if you're shooting in RAW, you don't actually have to be concerned about the white balance all that much because you can adjust the white balance later on in Lightroom or whatever pro post-processing software you use. That is one of the huge benefits of shooting in RAW. It's just one less thing to think about. So we've talked about exposure on your camera before and I've said don't shoot on auto mode, don't shoot in program mode. And I'm gonna take a step back from that, put that to one side and say, when you're shooting white balance, auto white balance isn't so bad. So we're gonna take a few different sh photos here and I'm gonna show you how the white balance will change as we select the different white balances on the camera. But I will say the auto white balance will do a reasonably good job 70% of the time in my experience. When you move to tungsten light or some moonlight or night light, then oftentimes it doesn't do a great job but in a cloudy day like this, it's gonna get it right, usually. So for the most part, I will use auto white balance on my camera and I rarely turn it off. The reason being I can process it later in, in Lightroom or whatever processing software I'm going to use. So it's not as essential to get it right in your camera, but it is important to understand the concept so that you can find accurate whites and get perfect color reproduction. So there is a big tree here and I'm gonna capture this on auto white balance. It's leaning out so I don't get the edge of the roof in. That's done a pretty good job. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna scroll through all of the different white balance settings. So that was auto white balance. This is going to be daylight. Shade. Cloudy. Tungsten. I should imagine this will not look good. Yeah, that looks very blue because we're not in a tungsten light. White fluorescent light. That's the same sort of tube lighting you get in an office. Again, quite blue looking. Flash. And then there's custom and color temperature, which we'll go to in more detail. So if I open up the white balance menu here, I can see all of the different settings I have available and their approximate white balance temperatures. So daylight is 5200, shade is 7000, which is roughly what we're in now. Cloudy is 6000, that's outside here. Tungsten, which came out horribly, is 3200. White fluorescent light is 4000, also came out pretty bad. Flash is depending on your flash. Um, custom, you can set yourself. And there's also Kelvin. We're gonna come back to Kelvin. Kelvin is the temperature measurement, and I'm gonna show you how I like to use it in just a moment. But let's go back for a moment. When we took those photos, you notice that tree looked really bad and a nasty blue when I was shooting in tungsten at a 3200 Kelvin. The Kelvin scale is the way we measure temperature. It's like Fahrenheit or Celsius. It's just a way of measuring temperature. But 
what it is exactly isn't that important for photographers. If you're a beginner photographer, I would say don't confuse yourself, don't go into too much detail, just know that you need to match the color of light you're shooting in with the color setting on your camera any further and it's only gonna to serve to confuse you. We've moved inside now to the library and I wanna show you the same as what I showed you outside, only the reversal. So outside, it was around 7,000 Kelvin light, a very cold light. And when I set my camera to 3200 for an incandescent bulb light, that's a very warm light. So it was off by around 3,500 Kelvin. And because it was so far off, the photo came out looking blue. It was an inaccurate white balance. If we do the reverse here, now that we're under this incandescent light, around 3200, I'm gonna take a photo with the right settings. And although there's a bit of an orange glow, the whites are going to be accurate in this photo. The whites of these books and the rest of the shelf are all coming out accurately. However, 3200 Kelvin light, a warm light, if I change the settings here so that it's 7000, an overcast shade cloudy light, a far, far too warm of a light in this image. So I'm standing here and I can see that this white is white, but my camera is telling me in this image that it's actually orange. It's gotten it really, really far off because I've chosen the wrong white balance. So I've shown you what it's like to shoot outside under 7,000 Kelvin light with a 3,200 Kelvin setting and inside under a 3,200 Kelvin light with a 7,000 Kelvin setting. By having an inaccurate white balance, the color does not match the scene you're capturing. So it's important to try and match that light. To finish, let's talk about the custom Kelvin setting on your camera. If I select Kelvin here, it's going to allow me to set any color temperature I want. So you'll notice as we go through these, it jumps from 4,000, 2,000, 3,200, 6,000, 7,000, 5,200. If you want a setting that's in between there, you can select the Kelvin setting here. And then by using a dial or a button on your camera, you can adjust this to whatever you like. So if I set this all the way to 89,000 and I take a photo, that makes it look quite warm. And if I change it again, and this time I go as far the other way as I can to 2,500, this is gonna make it look very cold. Yeah, it makes it look very cold. Let's recap. White balance can be a confusing subject. There's a new temperature system to deal with. You have to manually come up with automatic white balance adjustments to find the accurate colors in your scene, but you don't need to make it complicated for yourself. If you go into too much detail, you'll get lost, which is why instead of overloading you with all the technical information on how this works, I'm just gonna tell you to remember this. Shoot in auto white balance if you're shooting in RAW. That will work for 70% of the time that you're taking photographs. For the times that it doesn't, and you want to correct in camera to save yourself some time when you process later, find the correct white balance setting inside your camera, or as accurate as you can get. If you decide to not shoot in RAW for whatever reason, then it's very important that you don't just rely on auto white balance, you find the correct white balance inside your camera so that you can get the best results at all times. Thank you very much for watching. If you do have any questions, please leave us a comment below. Thank you.